Hi, Gareth here and uh, we're going to paint a sky scene and this is the first one and um, I've got my hake here and um, my water container, big water container. I've got my palette, my rag and over here I've got some tissue and here's my paper and up here some scrap paper which you always need. So if you've got all those things, let's begin. So this is what I'm going to do first, just a wet brush and I'm going to go across like this. Across the top. Then a watery mix, very light, and then I'm going to blend that in. Like that bit more water there and then a slightly th thicker mix here we go not yet too thick whenever you make a mix that is too thick add water and then if you have to move to another mixing area you can always wipe this up with tissue as well. Okay. There we go. That's what I wanted. Have to move a bit quicker now because I think it's drying out very quickly. And then this bit down here is going to be ground. So we don't have to worry too much about that. So just water like that is fine. Oh, we've got some gaps. Sometimes gaps are good. Now we're going to lead this. Now this is one of the hardest things in watercolour painting, timing. We're going to be doing wet into wet, but really it's more like wet or slightly wet into damp. In fact, to be more accurate, it's um, a slightly thickish mix. Not too thick, but slightly thick on slightly damp paper. And as you can guess or gather, that's not so easy to do. And the first stroke we make is like a test. Can you see here? It's spreading. And if that spreads super quick, it means you need to wait longer. So you do need to test it first. Now you might have a real tough time doing this today and become really disappointed, but this is perhaps the hardest thing in watercolor painting, which is um, um, working out how wet the paper is and being able to um, to work wet into wet without losing total control. We are going to lose some control though. So I'm going to go over that a little bit again. Okay. And then here. So I'll use a bit of this, but mix it with some more pigment, make it thicker, and then go across again, there. And then just do one more. I'm keeping this simple. And to begin with, it's really, really a good idea to do just simple skies. And that's, that's enough of that second wet into wet. Or oh, this is the first time I've done wet into wet, but now I'm going to, going to do it again. 
but with even thicker paint and even darker. Uh, you can see it's spreading, something I don't like, but you can't control it totally. Now I'm getting a really, really thick mix. And here we go. Yep. And then I'm going to keep making that thick by adding more pigment. And I'm going to do another stripe across here. And then I'm going to do just one more, I believe, here. Okay, this is blended too much and this, so although I didn't intend to do this, I'm going to go over it again with my thick mix one more time because I really want this to stick out. I want that contrast. And add some pigment, keep it nice and thick. And here. So don't worry if you can't, can't do perfectly straight lines you notice sometimes I'm using the flat and the thin. The thin is a bit more difficult to do. And it just takes practice. And the same with wobbly lines. If you've got wobbling lines, it, um, it just takes practice. It will come. Now, I might even do another dark one just here. There we go. Now, because that, that's gone a bit messy, spread out too much, I'm gonna wet all of my brush, then dab it on rag and then on tissue, so it's very dry now. And I'm gonna go across here. Now, I don't recommend this because it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. And it's easy to go wrong and what I do after each stroke, I wipe the brush on my tissue to get rid of the excess paint so I, I'm not sticking it back on the paper. And in a white area, it's gonna create smudginess. So we don't really want that, especially with the sky. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I've washed my brush again and I'm gonna go across like that. Now, if I timed it proper, properly, I wouldn't have had to have done this, but I got my timing wrong. I didn't wait long enough, and it might happen to you as well. So now you know. Hopefully my mistake helped you. And look, we can do that. I'm just removing paint there. So now I'm going to leave that to dry. I'll show you another one I did. This is the previous one I did. I didn't have to take out any with this one. It just worked perfectly. So it really, really helps to do it again and again and practice and practice until, I want to say until you crack it, but sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work like today, but you can do corrective measures like I did. So there we go, let's leave it to dry. So there's just something else that I want to let you know about and it's tissue. Sometimes if you really feel like it's, it, the white areas have disappeared or are not clean enough, just get some tissue and just one time on one side and just wipe 
Now this can easily go wrong. You pick up some blue, so we throw that away, bit wasteful, and you get another piece of tissue and you make it into a nice shape for lifting off paint. And then you look around, you can even go over the same area again, or we could go down here. It didn't pick up hardly any paint, that's why I'm using it one more time. But you have to be careful. Many times I've, I've put paint back on the paper from the tissue, so I have to tell you that and you can lift off excess paint in that way. I recommend you have a go. I um, Originally, I really hated using tissue for my skies. And um, I don't know when it happened, but one time I was just messing around, painting a sky spontaneously, and I used some tissue and it looked fantastic and ever since then I've changed my mind about using tissue. Sometimes it does look terrible, sometimes it can destroy your picture but I still think sometimes using tissue is good because you can get good results. You can also get very good results so I just want to tell you about that because I think it will help you a lot and it can also be a lot of fun. I, I sometimes use a thin bit like this to get a rim, a cloud rim. Sometimes it can be too wide, um, but I still find it quite good and I also find it a lot of fun. So I wanted to let you know about that. Okay, it's still drying. Um, I bet you've never seen this way of of hurrying up the drying process using tissue. <laughs> no, not recommended. Although sometimes I've done it with these areas where the paint's not so dark because I've been in a rush. You can of course use a hairdryer, um, but for some reason I don't. Um, so let's leave it to dry. I'll be back soon. Okay, now it's fairly dry. It should be 100% dry, to be honest. I think it's good enough. Just wipe it with my tissue again. That's cheating, don't do that. Then get my brush. And uh, now we're going to paint mountains here, uh, distant mountains. So I wash my brush, uh, get some pigment. Um, get the mix right. So I'm adding pigment and water, then use my scrap paper. You always need scrap paper. I think that's pretty good, but I need a bigger mix, like that. Mm, maybe too strong. Yeah, maybe it's okay. It's gonna fade off anyway. So my basic shape is going to be a V. It's going to come down, it's going to go up with just a few bumps. It's really important to keep it simple. But we do want it to be sort of jagged. There we go. Well, maybe not. A bit more like that. Yeah. I like that better. Then I'm going to do this. Now the next thing, I wash my brush, wipe it on the rag and then just pure water I'm going across because I want this mountain to be fainter at the bottom. So I'm wiping off pigment here. It will look better. And then when it's like that, which is good, you want to get, well, maybe rinse it on the rag, then some tissue, and then at the bottom, just wipe up excess water. 
it's not really a problem because we're going to go over this in the foreground with a much darker tone it will cover up anything but um, it's still good practice because we could do other things with this we could have made a misty scene and so it would have been important for this area to be nice and clean no no marks and it's good to learn how to do a smooth um, gradation like this I think that's how you say it gradation it's going from a dark grey to a lighter grade well to pure white almost so now we let this dry back soon so as you can see this mountain has faded a lot and I don't even really need to fade it to make it look distant but I will just to show you so I perhaps should have made it a little bit stronger it's okay but uh, a little bit stronger might have been better anyway I've wet my brush uh, it's pure water now just dab it on the rag so it's not too wet and then I just go over this ridge line gently and again like that just pure water and that alone will soften this a little and you can just wipe it off you can just wipe it off by drying your brush and then if you really want to go a bit hard on it and make it much fainter use tissue I'm I'm not sure I should tell you about that because it can also damage the painting and remove paint so I don't think you really need to do it yet but just to show you so maybe you can see that's become a lot fainter there and what we can do is actually just do this side and that's good because what we've done is create variety in that line because it's still quite a hard line here but here it's become much softer and it's made that a very interesting line now so you always want to add some variety like that we've got a bit of a watermark here I'll wipe that up with my dry brush which is clean okay there we go now let's leave that to dry and if you wanted to you could let that dry and then wet it again and just go over it a few times with the brush and each time it would get softer and softer and you could keep doing that again and again and again but the tissue is a much quicker way but it can be a bit dangerous too okay let's leave it to dry now for the final part we're going to do our three trees one two three our ground and then some rocks and we're going to do some highlights using our fingernail also you can blend these rocks into the grass by using your fingertip like that and it's a lot of fun so let's begin now one of the hardest things I should show you this is trying to get this effect even I can't always get that and we'll be using our scrap paper a lot to help us get the right mix but we might not be able to do it but we just do our best so this is a bit too watery use some tissue wipe wipe up the excess okay then let's get some paint mix that up it helps so much having scrap paper so let's just practice up here yeah to get this um, 
effect with the trees you really want the brush flat going down flat even then doesn't always work if the mix is too wet which this is so I'm drying it a bit on some tissue yeah that's not too bad so ooh, what's that okay so our ground is going to be about here because we want to see some of this faded mountain and my tree is going to begin about here and it's going to come down and get thicker so let's make it a bit thicker and then we're going to have little branches sticking out like this and then let's see if this works mm, add a bit more pigment let's just go oh didn't like that it can be very frustrating that's better yeah not too bad um, I think really I needed it a bit stronger ideally you should do these just one time okay like that that's done and then let's do another one uh, I've got to do this sorry I just looked and I realized it's not really strong enough okay there we go now let's do the next one which will begin about here and get wider Ooh, it's a bit too wide but you've just got to got to jump in and try and hope <laughs> and pray okay there we go using the um, brush flat not like this that might work if you're very quick moving quickly across and then let's have one or two branches sticking out like that okay and then the, our final one okay about here it's a bit too close to the edge okay 
and that final one worked out I was going to say fairly okay but let's see yes fairly okay I'm not sure about the other two maybe they'll do use fingertip just blend it okay then some branches again I really like these need to make that a bit stronger it really needs to stick out from the sky this one too a bit more that will do okay now let's do the ground this took way too long but there you go now the ground you can do it just like this and that perhaps is the best way to do it just a kind of dry brush effect but you can also do this you can flick the brush up like that and that's what I'm going to do today have to be careful it can sometimes look a bit cheap and this technique can look a bit a bit more sophisticated or just a bit more natural I'm not sure what whereas this technique can look a bit childish if you get it wrong And you have to be careful not to do what I'm doing, which is go, going up higher and higher and higher. <laughs> I got some really long hairs there for some reason, but I think it, it, it passes the test. It's okay. Now I'm just filling in around here and it is quite thick, which means it will dry fairly quickly but that's good because I'm going to do my fingernail technique here and you need it to be dryish when you do that in fact I think I could almost do it now um, but I've got to add my rocks and they really need to stick out so pure paint and here we go not too bad and these rocks you don't really want too many of them we don't even need them but it's fun and looks a bit more interesting I think in Japan also you sometimes get that on a mountain you get grass and rocks this combination and have to be careful not for it to look too similar or to be too regular so I'm just going to use my fingertip to blend that a bit into the grass it's also given me an idea of how wet the paper is I think it's still a bit too wet for fingernail mark but it's not too bad a painting but if I'm going to be critical these trees really need to do, needed to be stronger I think they actually look quite good on the video I'm just looking at it now but as I look at the painting I think they needed to be a little bit stronger in tone but quite a nice painting um, while we're waiting for that one more tip as well the way I did this sky was quite tricky for a beginner because it was all wet into wet and um, it's good practice 
and it creates a lovely soft sky but what I might show you later is how to do it much more easily and uh, I'll try and explain it now basically we do a, a, gr a gradated or I don't even know how you say it graded I'll just say graded a graded sky so beginning with um, white paper just water then getting slightly darker and then even more darker at the bottom and then just leave that to dry and then we can do our second second wash well not wash um, you can work you can wet the whole paper and then go over with stripes or you can leave it dry and then go over it with stripes and then when it's dried go over it with water and soften it and then do that a third time and that will give you three layers for your sky I hope that's understandable you can see the three kind of layers here one two and three almost almost so I hope that was understandable that that would have been an easier way to have done the sky rather than to have done it all in one go okay I think this should be I'm not sure it's ready yet but let's try that looks pretty good just wait a few moments because if it's too wet it will just disappear oh yeah that's good Oh yeah, you have to clean your fingernail else you're dragging paint back into the paper. Well, I'm quite happy with this. <laughs> uh, use another finger. This is actually a lot of fun. And it's easy to do too much, which is what I'm doing. And we'll... Um, We'll stop there. And there we go. Look at me, just carrying on. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So there it is, we've done it. And um, maybe I might just do a quick video to show you how to do the sky that I was talking about in the easy way. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Please have a go and let me know how you get on. Happy painting. Okay, Gareth here. I'm going to show you how to do that easy sky now. And uh, sorry for my lengthy and probably difficult to understand explanation. Um, it was very impromptu. So here we go. Water. Let me make it wetter. Just water. Then a bit of a mix like that. And then an even stronger mix like that actually that's a bit too strong but um, you can see what I'm doing using my rag and getting rid of paint and just go over it again and then of course here we need to soften it because we'll be doing our misty mountain which we want to be faint at the bottom so we don't want it dark color there okay there we go leave that to dry okay now this is dried pretty much really it should be 100% dry mix up some paint mm, a bit weaker than that that will do and then just go across like this this way you have much more control over your sky but you don't get such a soft beautiful sky sadly this paper is buckling even though it's quite thick paper and uh, difficult to uh, paint 
straight lines across but I think you get the idea so basically that's what you do then when it's dry go over with uh, water and it will soften it and you can even use a tissue and then repeat one final time with even thicker paint and then you're going to get those three layers like this let's have a look here with this one so we've got something like mm, one then two and possibly three not quite three layers but almost or one two three ah one two three ah one two three yeah one two three three layers so once you get three layers that's enough and it looks very very good in fact as you can see even just two layers is not bad and will work so i hope that's helpful um i should leave this to dry okay i will do and then i'll show you how to do the final final one the final layer so now just do this one more time i haven't gone over this with water which i should do if i want to soften it more because it would just take too long here we go slightly darker and then maybe join that and just maybe one more there and one there like that and then it's a very very simple sky but looks quite okay and very very easy to do just keep it simple So if you find the wet into wet sky very difficult, this one might be a lot better, a lot easier to do. And then you just do your trees below. I should wait for this to dry, but I'm just showing you what you do. Here's your foreground, should have done a mountain. And um, then you just do your tree. like that and there you go maybe just one more there just super quickly just to give you an idea you'd let this dry this this sky you'd let it dry first but I'm just giving you an idea of how it looks and there you go not too bad right um, and if you went over this with water, just this sky bit before doing this foreground, you could even soften it. So this way gives you much more control over the sky and you might prefer that method. And I sometimes do this method myself as well. So it's not a bad technique either. Okay, hope that was helpful. Please let me know in the comments. Happy painting.